You are listening to the Less Dress More Fun podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about asks and offers. You are listening to the Less Dress More Fun podcast. I'm your host, Master Certified Coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week on the podcast, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most and have a lot more fun in the process. All right, let's get started. Hello, hello. It's so nice to be here with you. This topic came to me after a conversation I had, and I was feeling a little out of sorts after the conversation. So I reflected on it and and tried to understand not just the obvious reaction I was having, but the other thinking behind it. And I realized that the balance of reciprocity in my relationships portfolio, not just one relationship, but kind of across the board, was not what I wanted to choose. I got to thinking about relationship reciprocity. As I was workshopping my own reaction, I came up with this concept of asks and offers. So I just want to continue to workshop it out loud and and share what I've learned and offer suggestions. So I'm going to talk about the concept of asks and offers and where it came from, ways to detect when we're out of balance in our relationships portfolio, and then of course give a few suggestions for you to take into your own life to practice. Let's start with this concept of relationship reciprocity. So, relationships are an exchange of behaviors, words, and actions, and agreements and expectations. There's a strong cultural message that relationships are basically about meeting each other's needs and trying to make each other happy. And I don't just mean romantic relationships, I also see reciprocity rules in professional relationships, in parent-child relationships, and friendships, this idea that you need to meet my needs and meet my expectations, and then it's okay for you to ask that I meet your expectations. And at face value, maybe that works, and sometimes maybe it doesn't. For me, I noticed when I started managing larger teams. Uh, I would work with people and we'd be working around the world. And I know in the project management community, there's a lot of conversation around how do you influence a team when you don't have role authority over them? There's a lot of discussion in management and leadership circles around how to influence people and how to basically get them to do what you need them to do. And there's a lot in personal relationships, even some of the training I've had in couples and the learnings that I've had in parenting, there's a lot about how to get people to do what you want them to do. And of course, we don't have a similar expectation in all of our relationships. We're not asking a six-month-old baby to chip in and pay the bills. And, and, And I think most of us understand the balance of reciprocity in a relationship can ebb and flow over time. And yet I started to realize, like, I don't know if I really like this idea of just reciprocity and I state my needs and that's a implied expectation that you'll meet them and that's how I'll know that you care about me or you care about this relationship. And then through some of the coaching work that I did, I think it really broke in my mind this the meter of ask and offer. Um, that in a relationship, you can make a request, and in a relationship, you can make a contribution. As I started to learn that people, we have thoughts and feelings, and we make decisions about what to do or not do based on our personality, based on our life experience, based on our cultural programming, etc. And In a way, everything that I do, there's a lot of interpretation that I'm bringing to this situation and everything another person in a relationship with me does, they do based on their own interpretations. It broke my brain about reciprocity doesn't really work because 
they may not have the same expectations or desires. And there can sometimes be a mismatch. So for example, if there's a relationship and the person says, if you really love me, then you would pick up your clothes and and throw them in the laundry hamper. And the other person's like, whether my clothes on the floor or in the hamper has nothing to do with whether I care about you, you can see where it creates a little bit of friction. And this idea of, oh, I get, I am responsible for my own thoughts and emotions and reactions and what I do and don't do, I think sometimes then we realize because we have that opportunity and even that responsibility that in a way we can't really ask other people. And I know I see it. I saw it in myself. I've seen it a lot in coach communities. I've even seen it in my clients that we sort of swing the pendulum too far the other way to this thing of, well, that's what they're doing. That's who they are. That's all they can give. And maybe we don't ask for any reciprocity at all. And and so there was this, this situation where I just realized I had this reaction. I got to thinking, it's like, oh, I actually want to revisit relationship reciprocity. And I want to present it to myself in a neutral, formulaic way. And so I came up with this idea of looking at relationships of asks and offers. Like, are they asking a lot of me or are they offering things? And to be really honest, the the kind of little girl way my mind in, was interpreting it is, you know, everybody in my life wants something from me, but I didn't feel like there were a lot of people giving things back to me or asking me what I needed or showing up for me or listening to me. I'll share with you some of the ways as I really reflected on this and thought, oh, I, I think there's a lot I can learn about why I've allowed my relationship portfolio to evolve this way and learning that some of my trainings may have contributed to this out of balance. But then I thought, how can I help other people understand when they're out of balance and what to do about it. One way to detect when our relationship portfolio is out of balance in the category of reciprocity, people are asking a lot and not offering a lot in return, or maybe you're asking a lot and not offering enough in return, is pay attention to how you're feeling. So if you're frustrated, if you're feeling resentful, if you're feeling uncertain in a relationship, or if you're venti, that can be a way to detect if things are out of balance. For example, if you are in a work situation and it feels like there's a lot of venting going on, is it just collaborative venting? Like, oh, I just want to talk about what's bothering me and, and get a little bit of that social validation and just blow off steam? Or is it evidence that that relationship in that, I think we have relationships with organizations, with companies, with teams. I think we can even look at like, is that relationship out of balance? And that what is being asked for is not being matched by an offer. I'm thinking of a certain company situation where they, they ask and ask and ask, but what they've they've offered less and less and less over time. And so it's it's created an imbalance of reciprocity in the relationship, and people are feeling very frustrated about it. The second way to detect if you're out of balance in your relationship reciprocity is to pay attention to what you're doing. Are you complaining? Are you crowdsourcing? Are you explaining? Are you escaping? I laugh because that last one, that that like sense of escaping is, it's kind of, a, it's a tell for me. Like when I'm like, I just got to get out of here. I just got to get out of here. Sometimes that can mean that there's not really good, healthy relationship reciprocity, that maybe I'm being asked more than I feel like I'm being offered in return. I see this sometimes when people are crowdsourcing, when Maybe they don't know how to make a decision, so they're asking two people, 10 people, the internet. <laughs> what they're doing is they're asking people to help them solve the problem. And there are sometimes situations where you see the doing of like people asking, 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 
but they aren't there to be available for help when other people are asking. So just being aware that in some relationships, and again, this isn't just, you know, a romantic and a personal relationship or a friendship. It's just noticing even at, at team levels or company levels, when there's an imbalance in that reciprocity and it's showing up in these ways. And then pay attention to your mind. That's the third way to detect if your relationship portfolio or a specific relationship is out of balance in its reciprocity is when you're thinking always, never, this or that, I'm exhausted. Whatever I do, it's not enough. That is, again, that's one of my tells is like, no matter what I do, it's never enough. I see it a lot when people are like, I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. Is the balance of reciprocity is off in their life. One of the ways that I describe it is like, I'm taking care of everybody else and no one is taking care of me. And that can sound like, oh, it's a little victim-y and oh, it's kind of childish. And I think it's okay to, to notice, are you in a situation either in your own mind or in your relationships or your relationship with your identity where you're the giver, I give and I give and I get nothing in return? Maybe take a look at that and ask yourself, is that balance of what you're offering and what you feel like you can ask for? I think that's something to notice too. So what do we do about it? If you notice that you're in a situation that the ask and offer ratio is out of balance in one or more of your relationships, or if you look at your portfolio and there's a lot going out, but there's a not a lot of give and take, it's just mostly give or even mostly take, what do we do about it? I think the first thing is just pay attention to how you're talking to yourself about a situation. When the conversation that prompted this, it wasn't obvious at all that what I was feeling was an imbalance in my relationship portfolio. I thought it was just a scheduled discussion. Honestly, this is how all of this came about. And I was just really frustrated, like, oh, this person knows that I need X amount of notice before I can accommodate a request like this on this day. And I was really frustrated that they asked for a certain commitment from me in less than that window. And this is not just me being rigid. This is like there are, you know, a certain organization that I serve and I plan my calendar out three weeks in advance. And when it's locked in, it's locked in. So people in my life know this is your runway for making special requests. And I don't change it unless there's an emergency. At, at face value, it was like, it was just frustration with the person. And it wasn't until I really sat and, and thought about it. It's like, no, I just feel like just in general, I feel like things are just out of balance where I'm taking in a lot of considerations. I'm fielding a lot of asks and I'm not fielding a lot of offers to contribute or help carry the load. For me, that's the, the second suggestion really is I avoid engaging until I could sort out what was happening inside me. You know, when I noticed myself getting kind of frustrating, the surface issue, I might have had a conversation about that. And do you ever have conversations in your relationships where you're basically discussing the same topic over and over and over and over again, but we're not really arguing about the topic. There's usually something else at play. And if that's the case, look at this balance of asks and offers, and not just in that relationship, but in general. Think for yourself, what do I expect? What do I want? And why? And whether there's something else in play. Get familiar for yourself if it's an inside job or a relationship problem. <laughs> Something I found even over years of working with coaches and therapists myself is that they sometimes are very willing to agree with me that the problem is the other person in the relationship. There are times that I believe a relationship is out of whack when really it's not. It's I 
haven't been clear with myself about the balance of asks and offers. I haven't been clear that maybe the balance is shifting. And I haven't been clear when maybe if I look out across that relationship portfolio with work and with friends and with parenting and with romantic relationship partners, where maybe I'm asking a lot more out of one relationship because I've lost the balance elsewhere in my life. Then decide where you want to shift your own behaviors and thinking patterns. Again, this is this concept of it's an inside job. Like for me, I realized I wasn't frustrated with the person or the situation. I realized, oh, I see what's going on. My portfolio's gotten a little out of balance in the last couple of years. I can decide what I want to think about it. I can decide whether I want to make changes. And if it actually is something in the relationship, please be brave. Have a conversation about the balance of reciprocity, the asks and offers that are being given and taken in the relationships. Now, my people who have trauma, This is very, very difficult. And get help when you are having a conversation like this. Take breaks. Asking someone to be in a conversation about reciprocity can be very, very difficult when you've had a traumatic background and you feel like you can't ask for anything or it's a safety issue. This is for sure me. This is why for me personally, I find that I mostly get out of balance in asks and offers when I don't ask for reciprocity to be more balanced. I feel like for me, and again, this is not adult, grown-up Lisa, this is little girl hurt Lisa, for me, even the act of asking feels very, very threatening. So usually by the time I'm asking, I'm not showing up with my very calm grown-up self. I think it's important to point out that people who have a trauma background and who have trauma responses, it is not uncommon that we find ourselves in relationships where the ask, offer, set point is out of whack in the first place. It just seems to be the case that people who don't like to ask tend to find themselves in relationship with people who ask and ask and ask. And the maybe offer less in return. It's something to take a look at if you have trauma. Today, we talked about the concept of relationship reciprocity, this idea of making requests, asking, and accepting an offer, the give and the take, the asks and the offers. We talked about ways to detect when you're out of balance and the suggestions for addressing the situation, including when it's appropriate, getting help from the outside of the relationship or having a relationship conversation one-on-one. And again, this can be very, very scary for people who don't like to have difficult conversations because a, air quote, difficult conversation is perceived to be a safety risk. So just know if that's you or if you're in a relationship with someone like that, anything you can do to amplify that sense of safety is going to result in a more intimate, vulnerable conversation. This week, I invite you to pay close attention to the balance of ask and offer in the various areas of your life. When you think of ask and offer, give and take, reciprocity, what do you learn just by observing yourself in the next week? You might have areas of your life where you want to shift how much you give and how much you receive. You may want to have a conversation. You may want to look at the portfolio. Maybe you do have a very demanding job, for example, where they ask a lot of you and you want to give it. You just maybe need some other relationships in your life where you get to have someone look out for you and have someone help take care of you. So just look at where you're at with yourself, with your relationship portfolio, and see what you can learn. This concept just arrived out of my life during a moment where I asked someone to have a conversation. So I was 
in this conversation, I was like, I just feel like I just really needed someone to listen to me, not to fix, not to suggest. I asked them to offer me their ears for some illogical thinking. I needed to think out loud with another person who cared about me. And I was like, this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but please, if you could just listen and please, I don't need any suggestions. I just need like a warm body nearby to listen to me. And I was like, I just feel like in my life right now, the balance of asks and offers is just, it's not what I want it to be. And it was so helpful that that person offered me their unbiased listening. They just offered me the space to listen. And in the process of them listening, I was able to talk myself through to really seeing the situation in a fresh way. And it gave me the seed for this episode, which is kind of cool too. I hope that it helps you. I hope this concept of asks and offers and thinking about your relationship portfolio and the balance of reciprocity gives you another tool for living life with less stress and more fun. Because what you need and what you are willing to give, it it does ebb and flow. And as your life changes, you may want to revisit rebalancing that portfolio just like you do with other financial portfolios. So have fun with this topic. See what you learn about yourself. See what you learn about your relationships. And I can't wait until next time when I offer you something else. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate and review wherever you listen. This will help other listeners find the show and bring less stress, more fun out into the world. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you next week.